Hello, and welcome to the 86th annual Annisville Wolf Book Awards documentary post-film conversation. This conversation is a special program between SIFS Dreams and Annisville Wolf Book Awards as part of the 2021 Cleveland Book Week presented by the Cleveland Foundation. My name is Eric Seiler. I'm a professor, professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are pleased to be joined by two people from behind the scenes of this um, great documentary. First, we had the producer uh, of the documentary, Mary Fecto. Mary Fecto joins us from um, IdeaStream Public Media. Hello, Mary, and welcome. Hello. It's good to um, have you here. Also, we have um, an associate producer on the documentary, Shelly Rees. Hello, Shelly, and welcome. Hello. Oh, it's great to have you both here. Uh, this documentary was produced by IdeaStream Public Media, uh, which is the um, public broadcasting station in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, they uh, do a lot of fantastic work for the um, community and the area. But Mary and Shelley, how did you two get the honor to work on this documentary? Did you have to put in a pitch a bit? What did you do to get this role? <laughs> Um, well, I guess actually last year it started, I produced a, a documentary for the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards last year, and it was really a replacement because the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards is usually a live event that takes place in Cleveland every year. But uh, last year, of course, because of the pandemic, um, it, that live event was canceled. And so Karen Long, who manages the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards, uh, suggested, well, maybe we can try doing a documentary. And I'm a producer. <laughs> I do uh, video work at IdeaStream. And um, a lot of the video work I was supposed to be doing <laughs> last summer ended up getting canceled. So uh, I was available. And uh, I produced last year's show. And again, it was pretty unpredictable with the pandemic. So I, I think they wanted to have a, another documentary in place started just in case. Um, and yeah, got to produce this one. And this time I had the joy of having uh, Shelly join me on the, on the road. Well, that, that's great. Um, Shelly, uh, I know you work in community engagement at, at IdeaStream Public Media, but uh, how did you get paired up with Mary to produce this documentary? Yeah, so last year, Mary did this completely by herself. She flew everywhere. She did the editing. She did the filming as well as interviewing everyone. And so this year, the idea that I could come and help and I might have laid a couple of seeds and tried to encourage people that maybe I would be an asset to this project. But really, that is how I ended up on the project. Mary needed a little bit of help and I had a little bit of time. Well, um, it, it certainly showed the uh, work that the both of you um, put into this um, piece. Now, Mary, specifically, talk about your role in the documentary. What did you um, um, specifically do? Um, well, I, you know, uh, did all the shooting. So I, I did the video work and um, I, I came back and I edited the the documentary, put it all together. And um, I wrote the first draft of uh, <laughs> Henry Louis Gates's script and kind of figured out how the documentary would be assembled. Um, I did a little bit of graphics work in the end. And yeah, so I, I think my role was just getting it put together. Basically. Yeah. And what about you, you Shelley? How do, uh, what was your role specifically in this documentary? So my role specifically was interviewing all of the authors. And so I read all of the books, prepped questions. Mary and I went through those questions and Mary created questions as well. And then during the actual production, I was the person sitting and asking the questions, responding to the, the answers from the different authors and asking those follow-up questions. And then when we came back to Cleveland, all of Mary had all of the footage and it was pretty much her on her own again. So really I was the one who was in the field with her. Yeah, it's, it was absolutely a lot of work uh, uh, doing this. So you actually traveled from city to city, speaking to these um, various authors and uh, getting all this footage. Um, how, how long um, did this take? Uh, what time span did this take? Do you wanna start with that one, Shelley? <laughs> yeah. So we 
interviewed a different author every week for five weeks. And then um, when we came back, it was another additional month of Mary in the studio editing everything. And so it was uh, intense to say the least, especially because we were reading all of the books as well. So we're reading books, prepping questions, meeting amazing people in their homes and in their towns and taking B-roll while we're in each of the cities. Additionally, we interviewed past winners. So that also was happening within the five weeks while we were traveling. Yeah. Well, pretty intense five weeks, Mary, wasn't it? Yeah, and I completely forgot that we interviewed past winners in some of the cities. That's that's the other thing. We we kind of like tacked that on in the end because we just, we said, oh, we, we should have past winners come on and talk about their experiences winning. And that would be a nice little segment to open the show. Um, but it, yeah, it definitely added a little, <laughs> a good deal of extra work. I kind of have very distinct memories of like, we actually like, did we walk to Tiamba Jess's like house? <laughs> we spent like, we walked for like, it was sweltering hot in July in New York City in Brooklyn. And we, I think we walked, oh, we walked back. We were trying to get back to the subway because we, you know, the, Lifts are very expensive in New York. And we said, well, we can walk to the subway. And the subway was what, like two miles away? And like, I was carrying all this, we were carrying all this gear and. It was yeah. a pretty eventful walk as well. So he yeah. was like, yeah, you just go down the block and you'll catch the bus. It'll be there any moment. And then the bus was delayed. And then we were like, oh, this is only going to be maybe a half a mile. We'll just walk to the subway station. <laughs> and it was, significantly longer than a half of a mile. It felt like 110 degrees outside where we have backpacks and we're carrying stuff and it's hot. And when it's hot in New York, it smells bad. So we're just like walking <laughs> through the streets with like having really a sensorial experience with the sweat dripping down our necks and the pleasant aromas of New York City in the middle of the summer. Oh, oh my. Uh you know, the, the, the uh, adventures of production, you know, all the, the stories that we never see, but, you know, we just see the final pro um, product. Uh, let's move more into um, the documentary itself. Um, starting with you, Mary, was there a particular author that you really uh, uh, enjoyed um, meeting and working and connecting with? Is there an author that jumps out? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's hard because I really, did like them all. And I especially loved all their books. Um, I personally really enjoyed um, the poets. So uh, Victoria Chang and uh, Natasha Trethewey were, uh, Natasha Trethewey won for nonfiction this year for her memoir, uh, but she's a, she's a poet. And if you read her memoir, you can see that she's a poet because it's very, the language is very figurative and uh, just flows very well. So I, I think the poets have always have good answers too, because <laughs> they have a way with words. <laughs> so uh, I think that might possibly be Shelley's answer too, and I might have stolen it, but <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was my answer too. I, I think meeting Samuel Delaney was an experience too. Uh, he's a, you know, a legend. He He's a legendary science fiction writer, although he he likes to say he doesn't write for any specific genre, but he was very interesting to meet and a really a guy he's he's as kind as he is brilliant which i think is says something about him you know and what about you shelly is there a particular author that stood out to you yes mary did take my answer <laughs> <laughs> sorry as he was saying it, i was like okay but sorry. Uh, both natasha Trethewey and victoria chang they were really interesting people to interview because of the length of the interview. So we had a lot of time to talk about their lives outside of just the books that they wrote. And as a result of that, Natasha Trethewey and I were both competitive cheerleaders in our past lives. And so we talked about cheerleading. And Victoria Chang, she gave us snacks and made sure that we were hydrated and we walked through her neighborhood. And so that is why those two interviews stand out so much is just because I feel like I know them on a very personal level. And then Samuel Delaney, it was delightful as well 
because we went over to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and just walked around the museum talking about some of his favorite pieces. And I was a museum educator for eight years. Walking around museums is one of the most comfortable places for me and talking about art and some pieces that I've read about or I've studied that I've never seen and see him talk about those pieces was just a moment that I really truly enjoyed and am glad that I had that opportunity to talk to him about art. And so those were definitely some of the highlights. Um, although all of the authors are truly amazing and their books are amazing, but we had a little bit of a shorter time with others. So some good information there for the both of you. Um, um, starting with you, Mary, um, every production you both work on, you learn something from. What specifically did you learn from working on this production? I mean, this is a little intense, reading the books, traveling to various cities and interviewing you know, various authors. So obviously you learned a lot, but is there like one thing specifically you'd like to share with us that you learned? Wow. Um, I think one thing I learned was that, you know, you can go into an interview or any kind of shooting experience expecting it's going to go one way, but you always have to be prepared for it completely not going the way you expect. Um, and actually, I think of the Samuel Delaney uh, experience <laughs> filming with him as one of those. I, I, you know, I read his memoir. I read through some of his science fiction books. Um, and so I thought I had a, a good idea of what the responses to our questions would be. <laughs> and he turned out a little unpredictable, I think. I think he was um, someone who, you know, he, he doesn't have box dancers. I think a, a lot of the writers are so used to talking about their books at this point, so they kind of have their answers down pat, you know? He's someone who kind of, his answers were a little bit more unpredictable. And so when we got the footage, I had to be, when I was putting it together, I had to be a little bit more creative in how I put his story together. Um, and I was still able to do it. And it, I think his came out really good, but it was, yeah, I think it's, I think what I learned is to be prepared for, you can't ever prepare for the actual, you have to sometimes just go into it like an experience shooting and just, you know, <laughs> fly by the seat of your pants basically, because it's not as you expect it to be. Interesting. What about you, Shelley? What did you learn? It could be production, content, anything. What did you learn from this experience? So this was my first experience like this. I have not been an associate producer, especially for an idea stream public media documentary. I am a community engagement specialist. That's my formal title at idea stream. And so I'm many ways, the entire experience was very new to me. Also, outside of IdeaStream, I do a lot of work focused on history and the history of places specifically. And so to travel to different places and talk to the authors about the, the specific things that resonate with them, like Victoria Chang talking about what it's like to live outside of LA or Vincent Brown pulling up maps on his computer screen and literally walking us through, this is where the rebels walked from, and this is where this battle happened, was really eye-opening to see kind of their relationship and see how they're translating the different topics and the different events into their books. Because of course I saw it there, but I didn't see the way that they were processing that information. Oh. <clears throat> Idea Screen does a lot for the community. And uh, what do you feel, I'll start with you, Mary, this um, documentary has done um, for the community or will do for the community? Um, well, one thing it does is, I hope it does, is it, it, it makes people more aware of the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards, which is, it started in 1935, it's in its 86th year. And this is a big deal in the literary world. I don't think most Clevelanders are completely aware of the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards, but it's it's the only American book prize which is devoted to uh, books that address racism and cultural diversity. And in the literary world, it's a big deal. 
uh, it's on par with the Pulitzer. I mean, it's huge. And I don't think most Clevelanders know about this award. And I think this maybe, you know, gives it a little bit more attention, or I hope it does. Um, and then, of course, all of the work that these writers are doing um, in their books is so important to <laughs> kind of get that work out there, you know, promote these books and promote the work that's, you know, being done within these books uh, to address racism. And it's an especially important now. I mean, it's never not been important, but I think this year, uh, you know, almost as more than any, it's, it's so important to talk about this stuff. Well, what about you, Shelley? What do you think this um, documentary does for the community? It allows for the information and it allows for those interviews to become more accessible. So these last two years, last year and this year, by us being able to produce this documentary, people can go on YouTube and watch it. People can watch it on their PBS station, you know, on IdeaStream, Channel 25. And as a result of that, it hopefully is getting to new and different audiences. And I've had so many conversations with people just after Tuesday, talking about the authors and talking about the stories that they told, but also the possibilities that they open up with the stories that they told. The books, they really talk about this moment, although they're not specifically talking about the current events. They resonate with people in so many different ways, whether it's on a personal level because they might have they might have lost someone through the global pandemic or in a different regard of thinking about the similarities between history and what is happening now in our country. And so not only are the books timely, but they're just speaking to people in a way that is very necessary in this moment. And they're really good books. And as a person who went to the Annisville Wolf Book Awards way before I was going to help out, it's just so great to be able to share this with more people that I couldn't get in my car and take down to Playhouse Square when it was in person. Okay. Uh, building on what Ideastream Public Media does, uh, one of the uh, aspects they focus on, especially is education, and this is definitely an educational piece. I'll start with you, Mary. At the end, you uh, uh, highlighted the teaching artists, which brought us really, made like a real um, classroom connection uh, to this piece. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the um, development of that piece at the end and why you chose to um, use that um, um, <clears throat> um, you know, moment um, in the documentary? Of course. Um, I think it's it's interesting. Every single year that they have had an in-person in ceremony, well, I guess I shouldn't say every single year. I don't know. As far back as I know, they've always had a young poet reading a poem, and it's always a CMSD student reading a poem uh, to open the ceremony. Um, and I've always been like, who is that? Who is that kid? Like, where, how are they finding this kid? <laughs> like their poems are always beautiful. And um, so I uh, wanted to include a little piece uh, towards the end of the show to kind of show the development of how a, a kid uh, from CMSD, how the teaching artist uh, that is hired through the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards, uh, works with the students to write these poems. And we highlighted one student in particular named Simone, and she wrote a beautiful poem. And it's part of a poetry workshop that the Annisfield Wolf Book Awards sponsors um, in the classrooms. Um, in CMSD, I think they do, I think they might be doing, uh, Simone is from uh, Campus International School. So I think they might go to Campus International School every year, although I'm not quite sure. But um, so this year they did a Zoom thing where they taught the kids about poetry and they read previous Annisfield Wolf Book Award winners uh, and then have them kind of write poems inspired by past Annisfield Wolf Book Award winners. So they did a really, uh, interesting one with um, a Langston Hughes poem. And they use that to think of a prompt, which then prompted Simone to come up with her poem. The, the prompt was write something uh, you know about. And her poem is, is titled People. <laughs> so she wrote about people, but it's, it's, 
it's actually pretty profound uh, for, you know, an 11 year old to the, the poem itself is beautiful, I think. Well, I, I think so too. Uh, I think so too. Um, <clears throat> Shelley, when interviewing the various authors uh, for this piece, you, um, I guess after you finish interviewing them, you think about, oh, I should have asked them this or that. And during the editing, not everything can make it into the documentary. Is there anything, any, any information that you have that's not in a documentary that you think we should know about? Yes, there's so many different things. And one in particular that I think about is with Samuel Delaney. When we were walking around the museum, he was talking about an art piece and it was mesmerizing. It actually brought him to tears. And so he's sitting on a bench. He's looking at this beautiful piece. It brings back a memory of when he saw a piece in New York and he just started weeping. And it was a really humanizing, sentimental moment that shows so much of who he is and shows so much of in the short few hours that we got to know him. It showed the personality that we were able to learn and appreciate. Granted, it wasn't talking about one of his books or really his life. And so it didn't quite make it in, but it's one of those special moments that I'm going to hold dear for the rest of my life. Yeah. Good. Go ahead, Mary. I was going to say part of the reason we didn't include that was was also because I was like shooting a cutaway shot <laughs> and then like came back to that shot way too late and it was fuzzy and Shelly was in the shot. It was a terrible shot and it was a, it was a beautiful moment, though. I If you listen to nothing but the audio, it's a beautiful moment. <laughs> but if you see the footage, it's like, what is this garbage? <laughs> What about you, Mary? You had to make a lot of editing decisions. So if you had just maybe two or three more minutes, what would you have put in there for us to see? Um, I think what Shelley said about the Samuel Delaney uh, was, was one of those moments, although it probably would never have been able to get in because, like I said, the shot was pretty terrible. Uh, um, there's There were a few moments that I left out of uh, Natasha Trethaway that I wanted to include, but to be honest, and Shelly can attest to this, that interview was very emotional. Um, her book is about many things, but it's partly about the death of her mother at the hands of an abusive stepfather. Um, and so that interview took a pretty long time, partly because she was crying through a lot of it. And I didn't want to, I think she was pretty sensitive to crying on camera and I didn't want to uh, include shots where she was actively in tears, even though I think a lot of people think of producers as being like, woo, those tears are gold. Like that's good television, but I, I just didn't want to do that. <laughs> And there was a moment that I left out where she actually, Shelley asked, um, who did you write this book for? Who was the audience for this book? And her response was so beautiful, like all of her responses, but she said she was writing it partly for people who don't understand domestic violence um, because she was getting a lot of feedback after her book about um, People, people writing in saying, well, why didn't, why didn't your mom just leave? And, you know, she did. <laughs> that's, that's why he killed her. She, she left and that's where the violence began. So she, that was one moment I, I left out mainly because she was crying when she was saying it and I didn't want to include it. Um, and uh, she also talks about it, who else the book is for is for people who lost a loved one. Um, and that was a really beautiful moment that I wish I could have put in, but I had reservations about doing that. Mm -hmm. um, have any of the authors um, responded to the documentary so far? So can you share any of their responses with us? I, I haven't gotten any responses yet, although I'm going to, I haven't yet sent them. I wanted to send them an email with, cause I finally separated each of their, <laughs> each of their individual segments. 
Um, so I wanted to send them to the, the artists or the writers personally and, and see if maybe we get a response then. I'm not sure. Uh, I should have I should have been more active in sharing it with them specifically, but I didn't. <laughs> so no. <laughs> so they will see it eventually, and I, I'm yeah. sure they will be pleased. I feel like they're, they're busy, and they'll like get to it when they get to it. <laughs> <laughs> As we're coming to a close here, I'll start with uh, you, Shelley. Um, I know you are uh, work with community engagement. You're working on a new um, project now that could probably have like some kind of similarities to what you just did. Can you explain that to us, what you're working on now? Yes, so I'm currently working on a project focused on racism as a public health crisis. And so with this project, we are partnering with different organizations to think about how we're really going to solve for racism as a public health crisis. Also, the health team is producing content that really is speaking to and helping our community understand how racism is interwoven within our system and specifically within the healthcare system. And I think some similarities is it's really both of these projects speak to and allow people to get a better understanding, understanding of diversity and equity and inclusion and what that means in different fields and what it means and how it impacts our lives daily. Since the Anisville Wolf Book Award is really talking about topics of cultural difference within the different books, and at the same time, the racism as a public health crisis, connecting the dots is the official title of it, is also helping people to explore and understand sometimes cultural difference, but especially the impacts of racism in our community. And so that's where I see some similarities also I think one similarity can be that both of them are really engaging projects and hopefully is bringing people in to not only learn but to explore and hopefully is a small window into another person's life that will make a difference for whomever is watching. Very good. Um, Mary, I know you're not working on anything big specifically, but I know you, you keep busy. But if you had a choice of your next big project, what would it uh, be? Ooh, I like this question. Um, I I really, I mean, I, I have to say doing the Anna Spielberg Book Awards kind of got me hooked on doing more long form uh, video or documentary. So I, I think I'd like to work on a long form documentary project. Um, and I love the themes of the Anna Spielberg Book Awards. I think they're so important. Um, so I, I'd love to do uh, another long form documentary. I'm, I, I'm also interested in doing podcasts. I'd like to try my hand at that because I think there's a lot of similarities in you know, the things that I do, like long form documentaries and doing podcasts. I think I, think I could be good at that. So something like that would be <laughs> an ideal <laughs> next project, I guess. Well, good. So hopefully the... Um... The, the powers that be are listening to you yeah. and they'll assign you yeah. to that. <laughs> uh, real quick, both of you, if asked to do this again next year for the 87th um, Annisville Book Book Awards, are you two all in or are you burnt out or it's like <laughs> someone else have it? What do you think? Oh, I mean, I will. So I, I'm all in. I think oh. that's the simple answer. But specifically for me, I enjoyed this experience so much that often I'm like, Mary, propose something with me on it again. <laughs> Maybe no. we can do it. <laughs> same, exactly the same. I mean, it was such a joy to work with Shelly on this project and I hope we get to work together again. And I will do like, you know, the Annisville Wolf Book Awards, like the 110th Annisville Wolf Book Awards. <laughs> I, I will do, I hope, <laughs> I would well, love it. <laughs> Well, well, good. That, that's really good to hear that both of you are passionate about your work. And, you know, whenever you create a, a project, you're, you know, extending a part of yourself to the rest of the uh, viewers, which is really um, um, great. We appreciate that. Well, Mary Fecto, producer, Shelley Reeves, associate producer on this wonderful piece. Thank you both very much for joining us today and wishing you both all the best. Thank you. This was a treat. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and thank you to our audience for joining us for this important conversation. For more information about SIF Streams and Annisville Wolf Book Awards program, please visit clevelandfilm.org or annisville-wolf.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>